Hi everybody, my name is Nick Justrician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University. And in a previous video, I showed how to use the keyer in an ATEM Constellation hardware unit in virtual production settings in Unreal Engine. And so here we have that set up already at uh, work. Um, I want to do a little bit of a slightly more advanced approach to that. Right now, the way this setup is uh, constructed, I've got the camera one feed coming in as the color, the RGB color for my composite. Then the mask is being used for the transparency. Uh, but if we take a look at how that would play out right now and just look at the uh, ME1 composite right here you can see i've got a little bit of green fringe along uh, my shiny compositing head and we have features in the constellation that can correct for this uh, but then we need to change the mathematics of our material in unreal to correspondingly uh, understand that uh, correction so let's first get rid of that green fringe using the me uh, effects so if i switch over to my software control for the the upstream key uh, again we have black as the background and the keyer is the foreground the keyer is getting its uh, camera one source and we already calculated the key in that previous video there's a link in the description of course but what we want to do is get rid of this little green tinge along the edge and the chroma correction area of the keyer in the constellation will take care of that so i'm just going to take spill and increase that and as we do that we should see yep sure enough that green color on the edge is uh basically burned off so we've corrected for that color uh, and there's other color adjustments that we have here uh, we can you know increase or decrease the amount of red or blue or green uh, we can increase and decrease brightness as we like and these are nice features because we can control these live uh, from our uh, key our atem software or from a control surface and uh, they're independent of the calculation that's happening inside Unreal Engine. So uh, let me just go ahead and I'll just increase brightness, for example, so we can see that happening. But uh, if we zoom back here and take a look at the key that's being shown in Unreal Engine, we're not getting the effects of this, uh, this brightness adjustment. And the reason for that is that all of this spill and uh, brightness color correction is going into the key of the ME1 output, but we're only drawing our color from the camera one input. So we're getting the unadjusted camera input. And so instead, what we would like to do is get this composite that is over black into our color feed for the actual composite here in unreal engine and of course all we need to do is adjust the output remember that uh, currently output one is getting its color from camera one so the camera one feed goes straight into unreal and that's what's being used for the rgb of this material so we can take output one and change it to me1 and then this uh, composite over black will be used so now we're getting the benefits of the uh, the D spill and so the green is taken away and we also get the brightness control so now we actually have hardware brightness control right here in the ATEM that can be used to adjust things like contrast and brightness and saturation and such uh, right here in the hardware and we'll see those effects here in Unreal Engine now Mathematically speaking, we haven't really gotten the key exactly right now because what's happening in Unreal is we get the mask and we multiply by the mask where the white values are one and the black values are zero. And those gray values in between are, are adjusting the, the soft edge of our key. So that's happened once already in the keyer of the constellation and mixed in with black and then we bring it in to unreal and as a result we're, we're basically multiplying by the mask twice so what we want to do is get the color from this me1 feed that we're giving this now and then 
unpremultiply that, meaning divide by the alpha channel that we have, uh, so that we're um, essentially we have a clean set of uh, RGB values. That then the material can uh, perform its opacity calculation uh, the rest of the way. So we'll double click on our material. And here is the material that was created in the previous video. And all we have is the color fill coming in from the constellation that's going into base color. And we have the mask going into opacity. I'll set this to a plane so we can see what's going on. The effect of what we're about to do is very, very subtle. But as, as someone who used to do compositing and feature films, it's a really, really important step to make sure we don't get any dark fringe around the edges of our keys. So we're going to use a function called unpremult or unpremultiply. So we can just right click in our material and type in unpre. And there is our unpremult uh, function. The only problem is it's expecting a combined red, green, blue alpha input. But there's really no alpha channel here in this feed. Uh, we have red, green, and blue, but we're not really getting an alpha channel from this. So we want to combine the mask input that we're getting and uh, combine that with our red, green, blue before we feed this into the unpremult. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to make a new floating point four vector. So make float four. So this will allow us to take our red, green, and blue inputs from our camera feed or from our color feed. So red and green and blue. Missed that apparently. Blue. There we go. And we'll take uh, any one of the channels, red, green, or blue, from the mask. So I'll just take red, connect that to alpha. So now we have red, green, blue plus the mask alpha. We can feed that into unpremultiply and then take the resulting RGB output of this and connect that to base color. Now we can go ahead and save. And again, our uh, new result is only going to be very, very subtly different. And there we go. But now uh, we know that it's uh, going to be more mathematically accurate because we're not multiplying by the edge twice. You would see this mostly with uh, brighter foreground subjects on bright backgrounds. You would start to see a darkening edge and uh, this should correct for it. So I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.